we are supposed to discuss is this is a very very important topic. The topic is human life and social behavior of things. First of all, you will try to understand that what is human life, and after that, we will have to discuss this uh, social behavior and what is the relationship of social behavior to the life of the youngsters and what is the requirement, what is the need and what is the definition of the social behavior. First of all, let's see that what is this life. You no, know, it's a very matter of common observation that this life is a supreme gift of God Almighty given to human beings. Nothing is more precious, nothing is more costly than life. Even if it is a human life or it is animal life or the plant, living organism, life, whatever is the life, that is important. This is why, but when we, we talk of the life, you see among all these uh, living organisms, the supreme status, the supreme position is given to human beings, to you, to me, to every human which is living in this society. And uh, why this uh, supreme status is given to human beings? You know the reason very well that man is set to be the Messiah of God Almighty and His Son. He is the leader, and all the other living organisms, the whole of the universe, it is subordinate to man's life. They are being created for the happiness, for the comfort, for the joy of man. Man has been bestowed with reason. This is the only difference and between animal, world, and the human being. That man has, this is the supreme gift of reason. A man can, you say, behave properly in the society. Because he is supreme, he is superior, because he has this intelligence, he has the reason. And why the rest of the organism, they don't make use of their reason, of their intelligence. Therefore, they are, I won't say that they are inferior, but they are subordinate to human beings. So when uh, we conclude that man is the center of the universe, the whole universe, this is revolving around the personality of human being. Everything is being created in this universe for the mankind. So, what is uh, the purpose of man? What is the, 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 life, the aim of this life? Why man is being created as the leader? We come to this a bit late. First of all, let's see that uh, this life can be divided into two portions and two types or two parts, whatever the name you want to give it. One is this uh, external physical structure of life, and the other is the internal or the spiritual or moral aspect of life. These are the two very important aspects of life. We have this life as the comp comp composition, I would say, that of the merit and matter and spirit. The external existence, we call it the material existence or the matter. And you, being the student of science, you know what science says. I don't know whether it will be in some conflict with religion or not. The science says that matter is uh, eternal, matter uh, is uh, permanent. And uh, you see, having this attitude about our life, we totally, all of our energy, they are being wasted, they are being utilized, they are being used on the development of this external personality. You are you are, I am having this quote, this this and everything just to magnify, just to make beautiful my external personality. I am eating food, I am drinking water, I am doing all these activities in my life in order to strengthen my this outer structure 
outer way of life, outer existence. But uh, you see that uh, side by side, I don't say, I don't mean to say that this external existence are the external body, that is not important or that is of no value. I cannot say, nobody can say, that it is important. But much more important, this external existence, this material existence. There is another thing inside your body, which you can call it your spirit, your ethics, your, you say, morality, or I would say is the religion of Islam has given it the name of soul, the name of spirit and which is our belief, in spite of the fact that uh, we say that reason is the supreme gap, gap given to human beings. But belief is much more superior than reason. Faith, our belief, that is important, that is much more superior than this uh, reason or this intelligence. You see, this reason, this intelligence given to mankind, that has certain limitations. When it reach to a certain point, then you don't know the explanation beyond that. Then, wherever your reason stops, from there the faith, wherever the reason stops, from there the faith for example, God forbid, here happens some accident. Then people start commenting upon it. People are trying to analyze it, to dissect it, explain it, the phenomena. Somebody say that there was some problem in the motor car. Somebody say that the driver, he was dragged, he was raised, or some other explanation. Different explanations are given by different people. But at the end result, the end result is, everybody says, it was the will of God of life. This, this is kind of faith. This we call it is a belief. And this is the spirit of the soul. And you see that this spirit, this soul, this is permanent. Being a Muslim, it is our strong belief that if a man, you see that this external existence, this is just like the outer dress of a man. Sometimes I might be having a very beautiful dress, but the inner man, that will be a very dirty man. That will be, the actual thing is what is inside the dress. We have to see, we have to search for the man inside the dress. Where is the importance of this? And this is called, as I told you, whether you give it the name of a soul, you give it the name of a spirit, or whatever the name you give it. That all the philosophers of the world, all the religions of the world, they emphasize this internal structure, internal body of a man, which we call it soul. And when you are so, we say that such a man is externally, he might be a bad man, but we say that he is good by heart. He has no bad intention against anyone. So that means that this inner quality, inner being, this is important, that is being counted. Mr. Tratley, as I told you in the very beginning, that all of our energies, they are being finished and the depression, this is a showpiece. It is no value in the society and reality. But we are mostly misguided by this external <coughs> structure and we don't pay any attention to that internal structure. And that internal structure of the soul, as I told you, that every religion of the world, every philosopher, Alama Iqbal, calls it an ego. He has given it this name of Hoki. 
And the soul, being a Muslim, it is our strong belief, it is our faith, that the permanent thing in life is that of the soul. This physical body, it will have to vanish one day. One day. There will be no existence, but there is no death for your soul. There is no death for your spirit. So, as all the philosophers and all the religions, all the saints, all the great people of the world, they emphasize upon the purity of the inner structure of a man. If your inner structure is great, it is full of wisdom, full of knowledge, full of learning, full of morality, full of, full of good, uh, good action, good deeds, then you are said to be a great man, a great personality, you can play a great role in the society. As well, as you know, the name of Shaheen, Aruka, Pushal Baba, he is talking about this, this Uka, this Shaheen. He is not talking about my this Shaheen, which you see it. And what is needed for the purification of this inner soul? There are so many things. One of them is that of the social behavior. <coughs> what is meant by behavior? There are two, this is a combination of two words. One is said to be social and the other is said to be behavior. Social means society. The life of a man in a society. You are a living organism and your life is dependent upon each other. You have this life in the society. You are attached to one another. You have this combination with one another. Life is not possible in isolation. You will have to depend at one stage or the other upon someone. And someone will have to depend upon you at some stage of life. You see, man is not said to be a machine just to make money, just to have this joys and comforts of life. Man is a spiritual being, man is an ethical being, man is a social being. As Aristotle has said, that man is a social animal. I, I won't say that why he used this word animal, we cannot bring a man to the category of the animal. But anyhow, life without society. This is absolutely impossible. In isolation, life could be become, you say, dull and inactive and passive. I don't know whatever the name we will be given it. But this society, it is molding, it is making your behavior. And this behavior, what is this behavior? You know, being the student of literature all the time, <laughs> behavior is how you are behaving in everyday life. What is your attitude? What is your activity? What is your life? What is your doing in everyday life? What you do? What you behave, for example, your walking behavior, your talking behavior, your eating behavior, all these type of behaviors, your, you see, your playing behavior, all these behaviors, they are being molded in the society. They are being developed in the society. No doubt this is a very lengthy discussion. Some people say that behavior is a product of nature. 
you have been bestowed by nature with good behavior. And some say that it is entirely the work of environment. Your behavior is being molded, made, and the environment. Environment has a very dominant role in the development of your behavior. But anyhow, whatever the case may be, in the colleges and the educational <coughs> institution, this type of behavior is being developed. Actually, when uh, you come to the college or you come to the university, it has two major aims to perform, two great functions of this college and university education institution. First of all, as I told you, that it is for your education, for your learning. And this is one aspect of this college of education. And another very, very important aspect of this college education is that of giving you practical training of using your learning and the I would say that it tells you, you are, you are not, see, you have taken it very much in a limited sense. Whether every institution has been transferred and to a degree awarding institution. Nothing more than that is there in the college. And you have been given this realization from the very beginning that you are coming just here for getting your degree, for passing your examination, and having good marks in your examination, and after getting uh, some good job and practical life. This is one aspect of this college education. Another a very, very important aspect <laughs> very, very important aspect of this education, not only in the college, but in the schools, in the universities, everywhere, it is the development of your social behavior. I would say that this institution is just like our child. Here, your character, your behavior, it is being molded. You see, in the behavior development, there are certain institutions, they are taking a very uh, great part, very dominant role they are playing. You see, some of the social institutions, for example, the beginning is that of the family institution. I am not a psychiatrist. Okay, thank you. But I can realize everything which you come in contact with me, you will have the same experiences that from which type of family this child is coming. Because you develop the traits of your family. You are here representing your own family or here. If you are coming from an educated family, you are coming from a civilized family, you are coming from a social family, you will face structure. Even if you don't speak at all, your face structure will show that behavior, that you are the product. This is the, of that family. This is the beginning of the making of a social behavior. Most fortunately, this social institution, not only in Europe, in America, family life is being totally destroyed. There is no concept of a family life over there. So where the social behavior of a child will develop? See that this is why that in America and other developed countries, this type of love, this type of respect, this type of obedience, 
this type of relationship and between a father and a, a daughter and a son and between the teacher. There is no such concept of these things. They have gone out of their lives. Externally, they are very strong, as I was telling you. But internally, they are empty. And you will see one day that all these developed countries, they will collapse under the pressure of the break of the family life. This is the foundation. When you are cutting the roots of a society, of a civilization, so from where it will come? Slowly and steadily, all those problems which are being confronted in that society, they are coming to our society also. Family institution is losing its soul upon its children, upon its uh, newcomers. Then, social institutions like Kudra, it's a very great symbol of this behavior making. And uh, in the good old days of the past, Hujra was the symbol or the center of this socialization. Your behavior was being molded in the Hujra. But today you see that the Hujra is reaching either to a drawing room or in some places people even don't know the name of a Hujra. That institution has been destroyed. I won't say anything about the religious institution, they are there and you know it very well that what is happening I was there. I come directly to the educational institutions. This is the only hope where we can expect 